Set it up and come in now. You ain't nice. <laughs> okay, but yeah, so crabs in the bucket. In life, it seems like there's it's so hard to find people that are willing to actually be around you and be supportive of you for you and you supportive of them. It seems like a lot of people just want to be stuck at the bottom. And instead of climbing up with you, they want to instead drag you back down to where they were or where they are because they don't have any ambitions or goals or dreams in life. And when they see you being successful or you doing your work or you living out here going on your spiritual journey or your self-development journey or any kind of personal development journey that you may be on, old friends, old enemies, old family members, they could all be a, dragging you back down, keeping you stuck where you are with no care other than the fact that they don't want to see you go where you want to go they want you to stay where they are so they can be happy in their misery they say misery loves company after all and that hell's true for a lot of people that's why i like isolation <laughs> can't be miserable if i'm happy <laughs> oh, no, wait. i said wait. it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> i can't be miserable if i'm happy <laughs> <laughs> but yeah go back to what you were saying yeah bro yeah people do like to bring you down you have a success, you know, like you living in success and they're not living in success. They want to bring you down so they don't feel bad about themselves. I've felt that before. I don't really act upon it or nothing, but yeah, I'm like, shit. I, I'm happy for people, but like, yeah, I tell people straight up. It's just not about me as much as I can. Like, there's nothing more I can do other than just be happy for you. It's not being happy for me, not being happy for them. But at the same time, yeah, I try not to get in the way, try not to drag nobody down because... I don't gain nothing from that. Other people gain like mental, satisfa mental satisfaction that they're able to get power over you and the situation, they're able to control it and able to woo woo. And then they put you down a level below them and then you got to look to them. It's like, oh my God, you're doing so great. Thank you for just allowing me to be in your presence. I'm like, I mean, that's y'all's story, but it's not mine. Actually, I've gone through recently and um, deleted a lot of people from my Facebook and my Instagram as well. Like, I had around 500 people in my list of contacts. I've narrowed that down to maybe 210 or so. And that's still a pretty excessive amount. Slash. Yeah, exactly. It's like a 60% decrease in bullshit because of people that I either I didn't mess with anymore or old flames I don't mess with anymore or people that have previously done me dirty and I still kept them on my list of contacts. Just because, like, oh, maybe they'll change in the future. Spoiler alert. They did it. Yeah, exactly. People are still stuck in the same spot that they are, and you, they expect you to just stay stuck with them. And then when you move past them and you're sitting there living the high life compared to them, they're like, whoa, take me with you. But I'm not going to contribute anything. If anything, I'm just going to leech from you. And then they end up fucking up your life just because you try enlightening them. And then when they don't end up like where you are, and then they start dogging on you and bringing you down just because you tried to help them. They blame you for the downfall. All the time it was them. It's a coping mechanism that the human conditioning has brought Exact. To. Yeah. Go on, go on, spit. It's a slippery slope, like he said. <clears throat> they make light about all these serious situations and stuff. And like, there's a status quo. Like, yeah, nobody from my job gonna see this shit. And if you do, Gang, gang. But, um, yeah, just looking at it from my standpoint, like, that's what I'm doing when I'm working right now. It's literally a social experiment that I'm doing. I'm trying to see how a person that's not a part of the group can fit in with a, with a group that has, like, a certain way that they are. Me as the new kid on the block, me as a different ideal. Everybody from the same city. They all know each other. People work with each other beforehand, blah, blah, blah. Point is, they all, they all got a way that they are. They all got social cues that they, they are with. They have these things that they test you with just to see where you at because they want to identify who you are, what are you, so they can know how to deal with you. Me, on the other hand, I think completely different. I am aware of how they think. Sometimes I, sometimes I can connect with it. Sometimes I can't. But, yeah, because it's a mental situation. Shit, I'm on a spectrum. Gang, gang. I'm on the J spectrum. Fuck, I can't talk. I'm on the J spectrum. But, yeah, it's a whole spectrum. So, like, people think different, differently how they depending on how they raise their interest, all that, that plays into a thing. And if you do not 
go with the status quo or like what everybody consider as normal, then you're weird. And then they disregard you as weird because obviously you're doing it wrong because this isn't the way that everybody else is doing it. But they don't understand. You're doing it in the best way that you can do it. They don't know what the fuck you deal with. They don't know what the fuck how, how you feel. So, so you got to do what you can to, to cope. Yeah, back to that. It brings up to coping with society because honestly, bro, all the people that claim to be normal, y'all crazy, bro. You're insane. Y'all do shit literally expecting a different outcome. And then when bullshit happens, when your actions have consequences, when you don't want to take accountability, you want to blame everybody else that was there, that was, in, that was part of it. I fell victim to that. I used to live in blissful ignorance. I was happy as a lurch. I didn't have to deal with none of y'all fuckery because I just didn't let myself know none about it. I know now, but I still try and live in ignorance because I don't want to give it the attention that it wants. So I live in blissful ignorance and happy and shit. But when you got to deal with life and that shit runs up on your damn doorstep, that shit seems weird. It seems fucked up and it doesn't have to happen. But because majority is that, I got to deal with it. And that shit can change you, fuck you up. And then to a point that you got to, you got to fucking, uh, you got to get your stuff before everybody else gets your stuff. Because what they tell you, what the world don't taught you, nobody's there for you. Nah. Not at all. And it's also a societal curse as well. Like, especially in Western society. A curse. <laughs> Genuinely, like, a societal curse is that in Western society, it's just so stigmatized to be, like, on self-development. Everybody talks about, like, you know, um, I don't know what people talk about, bro. I'm not a norm. I'm not normal. I don't care what they talk about. <laughs> I, know. I don't have any examples. <laughs> I'm just in my own world, you know, I'm living my own life and I do my own things like I, I'm happy with where I am in my life. I'm happy about the fact that, you know, I have my own house and I have my wife and we both have our own cars and we have our son on the way and everything. I'm happy where I am in life. I don't watch TV. I don't go out and party late night. I don't stay up till 4 a.m. with the boys. I don't I don't go out and do these normal things that everybody else does. As a matter of fact, I wanted to make a video of this, but I never ended up making a video about this because I was afraid about how my classmates would look at me because just recently, I went to my 10-year high school reunion, all right? And I went all dressed up, all right? I, I was all dressed up in like business casual and everything. I came in dress pants and a blue collar shirt and everything. Literal blue collar sh like shirt shit, right? All right, I had, I had my glasses and my rings and my watch on. I was dressed up. My wife that was drip. looking beautiful. Exactly. I was wearing the drip. the drip. I was being a ninja boss. Thanks, God, money. <laughs> That's a real ninja right there. <laughs> but yeah, so like I was, I was all, I, I was dressed up like a boss. My wife was dressed up just absolutely beautifully. I don't know if I have any pictures, but I'll be sure to post them up here if there are any pictures. But aside from the point, I went to that ten-year reunion thinking that. Every, like not everybody but i thought that like a good few small maybe two or three people that i met there at that 10-year reunion we're gonna be on the same shit that i am on continuous holistic self-development on improving yourself on making businesses on getting online income doing this online influencer shit you know i thought that i could meet other people that were on this you know, i thought we could talk about business and finances and all this grown-up shit because we're all almost 30 now, right? We should be in this wealth building phase and this life building phase. But I, 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 I'm not going to lie. I was just disappointed. disappointed. <laughs> I was so fucking disappointed. <laughs> he, he, call, he called my disappointment. Because when I went there, I, I was the only one dressed up business casual, blue collar. I was the only one that was like dressed up for real. Yeah, All the other guys were wearing shit like this or, or worse or just like one of them came in PJs. Some of them came in like, you know, a, a pullover hoodie and, and shorts and stuff. It was like. Oh, they said just come as is. Yeah, it, it was just come as is. I, like, I don't mind it. But what really killed my mood is that when I went around to the different tables that everyone was at and I was just sitting down with everyone and being like, what has everybody been doing? 
tell me what, what like what's your career field what have you been doing with your life my baby mama and yeah stuff like that <laughs> yeah basically <laughs> It got to a point to where after going around to several of my tables, I got to the realization that like a lot of a lot of the conversations revolved around like, oh, I should have done this. I have this regret. I I'm not where I want to be. I should be here or I'm fine where I am. But, you know, this and that. And it's cool. Like some people do have genuine good careers, but. I noticed something about a week after that fact. About a week ago. The week after the, the get-together, I noticed and thought about the fact that the friends that I do know that were in the class that didn't end up showing up, they're all either entrepreneurs or business owners or just in a high-end job. For example... One of them owns an oddity shop. Okay, Ooh. she runs a business that's an oddity shop that sells like weird occult things and macabre, macabre stuff or what macabre. Well, I don't know how to pronounce it, but she sells mean. really unique stuff in her business and she owns a shop and she was running that shop on the day. Another one is a Mary Kay consultant. She wasn't there because she was busy running her Mary Kay consulting business. Another one is really impressive, actually. I didn't realize it until after I looked on his Facebook. But the third one that wasn't there is actually a national sales manager. And I didn't really know how much he was making, but actually national sales managers, they make well over $140,000 a year, dude. Ooh. He's got his hands tied. And when I started really thinking about the fact that everybody that went to that reunion had like college careers or like you know commercial driver licenses or um tree cutting businesses they're all fine and they're all employee jobs but they're not jobs that would require you to have enough free time to where you can spend four to six hours just diddling away with people that aren't on the same wavelength Wavelength is you. Yes, thank you for saving me there. <laughs> so, I guess the whole point of that is that when I went with a higher expectation of other people that I used to know, I went away <laughs> fairly disappointed with the fact that some people are doing better than me with careers, but they're doing poorer than me when it comes to like living situation or social circles, or not having friends to be around that they can really trust with everything and anything. Or some of them are still single to this day, or some of them have two or three baby mama slash daddies. It's really ridiculous to me that the classmates that I used to know that used to be part of like the inner circle of popular kids and shit, they're all struggling at this point. They peaked. <laughs> yeah, they peaked back in school. And since then, they haven't been at quite the same societal length that I have been, and I have come to expect the people around me to be at. Not that I'm saying I expect you to be, like, you know, the same exact or above me. You're on a completely separate system from me. You're far more spiritual and into your inner Hayoka and, you know, far more into the actual realm of, you know, inner focus. You know? Like... So physical stuff is fine to you it's cool but it's not your main driving derivative like it is for me but we still vibe on a, on a whole vibe like a whole wavelength like he said you know we just have that chemistry between us you know I you. like I, 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 I would definitely look at him shirtless shirtless <laughs> 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 Yeah, like, it's different levels to it. Different people up in different levels of it. But, like, yeah, when you went there, you saw everybody that was in your same grade, same level, same age. You thought, all right, y'all have y'all shit together. Yeah. Nah, y'all fucking working to live. Other motherfuckers doing their shit, and they working to live. But, like, they got a bright future. When they go retire, and they going to turn the fuck up. You, on the other hand, going to live the rest of your damn life working. And, like, yeah, that's the reason. I was just talking to somebody about this shit. And I was talking to somebody at work about this shit. I was like, yeah, bro. Money, and cool, money is cool and all. 
But the thing that they take away from you is your time. That's one thing that nobody can give back to you. Once you get this old, you can't go back. Once you die, you did everything that you could have did. And like, yeah, you can sacrifice time, effort, won't, won't, but you got to find a balance. You can't straight up just be yeah, every damn day, work, work, work with no goal, no, no parameters, nothing. Even when I work, bro, I work for a reason. I'm working so I can go on vacation for the, exactly. for the I got, I got my, I got my purpose. I'm working too for both my jobs. Yeah. Like you said, what you working and stuff, you got a goal. You got a reason why you're working It's to make your life better for your wife and your child. Now I respect that. And like, yeah. I'm not gonna knock them for it. It's not my it's not my choice. Like he said, certain people got different things. One of the things I related to is some of them motherfuckers are still single. I take offense to that. But I don't, because like, yeah, being single ain't too bad. But like that goes into back what I was talking about with like how society make it that you have like they like society is a trap, bro. They give you all this good shit just so you can stay complacent and woom woomps. And like you gotta make a choice. Either you're gonna fall into the system or you're going to be out the system, and each of them got their pros and cons. You in the system, you get all the benefits of it, but you got to do it this certain way. You out the system, you get none of the benefits, and you got to figure out how the fuck you going to make that work. That kind of contrast between us, because I am firmly in the system's grasp. And I am, firmly. And I am diligently out of it. Exactly. It's that polarity that keeps the chemistry between us strong. Yeah. But we're mature enough to look beyond that. We can see beyond just... I can see beyond the, just the fact that he's not a hobo. Yeah. And he can see beyond the fact that I'm not just a corporate cop. Yeah. The way we see it, like, yeah. Being a hobo, being a hobo. I look at it as I'm a gypsy. Him being a corporate cop, he look at it as he being a businessman walking up the ladder. Climbing up the ladder. I'll walk up the ladder. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said I'll walk up the ladder. <laughs> and like, yeah, I plan to do that shit when I get, when I really feel like I have to. Right now, I don't. The thing is, like, yeah, I realized something. That's another thing I realized this week. Motherfuckers was telling me how young I look. And then I look at other people, and, I'm, and I realize. Well, I, I looked at the thing up on a, I, look, I looked it up on Google and w w went up on a couple of things, and I looked like, what's the things that make you look young? It was all about the stress, sleep, healthy food, all, all this stuff that's basic that you already know. You just don't think about it. And I was like, wow, I guess I'm doing a pretty good job since. Because, like, honestly, yeah. Look, you have a pretty stress-free life. You make, you make your life stress-free as much as you can, mm -hmm. even though the other bullshit happens. Yeah, the only With stress I got is other people, and that's their bullshit, their hang-ups, their morals, their fucking... And I realized, no, I don't have to play to that. I don't have to worry about that. I, test, I went up on a spiritual journey and tested that shit out in different situations, different people, different households and shit. And I realized what was the breaking point for me. It was the breaking point for them. And I realized I don't have to conform. I don't got to live like that. So I take the bad with the good. I am a hobo, quote unquote. I have places to go, places to stay. But no, I don't like having a stationary spot because the government can easily take that away with just a sign of a paper. I don't like that. That gives me anxiety. So I, I live up one of where I don't have to like live with that guillotine over my head other people yeah they live like that and able to like keep it afloat so like the government can't touch them where they always have a backup plan and they always have something been cooking that that's me yeah like that but i can't do that right now so i have to go about it another way same with y'all y'all got different ways and y'all know this you know this she knows this he knows this they know this he knows it <laughs> Bro, knock over my fucking again. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, it's like that. That's what I'm about to say. Yeah. You don't gotta be the sheep. Other people opt to be the wolf. But you can be a shepherd. Or you can be like me. Be the black bird up on a fence that just flies away to another pen. That's racist. I'm talking about a crow. <laughs> 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 he said that's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, even you, white man, can be a black bird. Oh, well, no, you can't. You're locked in a pin. I am. I'm a. I'm a carrier pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to be a pet. Ca I'm a carrier pigeon in society. <laughs> I'm already locked in the system.
Yeah, I guess we we'll use bird analogies. Yeah, we can go for that, man. He's already carrying your pigeon. He has to go to A to B and then come back home. <laughs> yeah, be that bird. Be the motherfucker that is immortalized for all the service you do for the nation. Yeah, exactly. Be immortalized in whoever's life that you impact. Like, yeah. anybody that you come around, you want to immortalize. That's like, I think that that's one of the main purposes of my life and what should be the purpose of a lot of men's life is that you find purpose in the community that you create with other people. You should find purpose in the fact that you can help other people as much as they've helped you. And you create this community of other people that raise you up as much as you raise them up. And you just create this whole entire positivity empire. feedback loop and empire. Yeah, it, it, he has better shit than me. I, I, I just keep repeating the same shit. But you, you have better analogies. You have the wild card analogies that I could never come up with. That's why I <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's important that men build an empire with other men. And you trade, not war. Which comes with the back to the whole Kaz the Bucket thing. Yeah, it loops back around to that shit. Because, yeah, I was at that point where I knew exactly what type of man I wanted to be. I wanted to be a man that would help everybody around me, make everybody, like, that's my goal. Well, that's what I, I yeah, that's Remember, the reason why I'm working right yeah. now, to get back to how I used to be. And my goal at work was to make everybody else job a little bit easier. I remember when you told me that you were going to be a genie. A real life genie. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to be a genie. I wasn't going to be there forever, but at the same time, I was going to impact your life enough to make it be great. Like, yeah. To leave a good impression. No bad shit. No bullshit. And then I was going to go away as a bottle and go to another family and stuff like that. Influence the generations like that. They wasn't going to be my kids, but they was going to be my kids. Like, they'll learn and I help and stuff like that. But then everybody start making their wish. Like, that's the genie analogy. That's another thing. Like, when I did that shit, everybody made their wishes and stuff. And I fulfilled them. But then when they realized that their wishes was not good enough or not enough for them. Yeah. They'll realize what they've done and be like, oh, I've pushed you away. Or I created this barrier or this stuff. And I'm like. There's nothing I can do. I, I chose him to respect you and respect your wishes. You got three wishes, and like I'm gonna give you those. After that, should I, the relationship is what it is. And like after a while, I was like, damn, this is really taken from me. How the fuck am I gonna enjoy being a genie? So I said, fuck that shit and broke my chain. And now I am not a genie. I am just a magician for now. But yeah, it was like that. The genie analogy. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Only yeah, like everybody. Like, yeah, that's how society works. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. That's how society works. You do this, and, like, you care about how it looks upon to all these other people. Because that's your reality. Your reality affects another person's reality, and their reality to your reality. That creates reality. Otherwise, it'd be fake, such as a dream or some shit. Like, you can have a dream. Like, I can have a dream about you. We went up on a whole damn carriage. <laughs> So that's what it's like. <laughs> we go up on a whole damn adventure and shit. And I come back to the real world and be like, oh my god, Joe, we did so much. You saved my life. I wasn't even there. But she was in my dream. That didn't happen. You still want to be my best friend? No. And it's like that. Like, yeah. But I realized, yeah, I don't got to fucking play into none of that shit because, yeah, my reality is my reality. I can fucking be delusional as much as I want, as long as I act accordingly. But and yeah. this is important for a lot of you that have this whole my reality, my my life, my my truth, yeah, my reality and my truth. True. The only thing is that you don't go around pushing your reality and your truth onto other people without consent. Without consent. Cause that's bullshit and that's just unfair stupid that, that that's just straight up stupid if you try pushing my life my reality my truth onto other people they don't give a damn mm -hmm. it's your shit other people don't care about your shit exactly actually yeah that goes into exactly how i feel without what i was talking about how everybody else like responses to you and stuff yeah 
Don't push your reality. This is my shit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna enjoy my reality. I ain't gonna push it Everybody's you. the main character in their own anime, after all. That's a fact, bro. You, nothing, nothing in your life happens without you being around. I mean, stuff that affects you probably does. But you, there, everything you. that you do. It, like, yeah, like, it's as far as you can see. These walls isolate us from the outside world. And in my world, I am the main character, and he's the side protagonist. Like but it. in his world, he's the main character, and I'm the antagonist. I was going to say that as a joke, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I guess uh, I don't go back to that. But, like, go back to, like, what I was about to tell you. Yeah, some something that we've been doing at my job. Like, yeah, we were just talking and we was remembering, we were just remembering about stuff. And I remembered about South Park and, like, those guys that, like, had the little nipple buckers and, like, they're, like, pretend like they care about the situation. Like, oh, none of your electronics are working. Oh, that's too bad. So, so sad. Maybe you can get my manager. Oh, that's y'all, bro. In real life, bro, we did that shit at work for like two days, just fucking with it, having fun, just fucking around with it. And yeah, after a while, I realized, bro, this is what they've been testing me to do to try and see me, to see me say something, to see what's my opposite view up on it. And I was like, oh, wow. And we were just playing with it. And like, that's what the world really do. They pretend to care. But you get the analogy. We were doing that all throughout work. And like we were just fucking around with it, just with the situations, with the orders. Basically, anything we could fucking touch with. The moment you said something, you just signed yourself up to, oh, for our pity, bro. We called it the pity party. We had too much fun with it, bro. We got to a point that like one of our friends said, please stop it. Oh, you don't want us to do it anymore? That's too bad. Oh. Jesus Christ. You need more sauce so you can put the size on it? Oh. You got a perch with fries? Oh, we don't have any more ketchup. We're going to have to go in the bag. <laughs> yeah, they were making fun of the cooks was making fun of it, too. They was like, oh, you want sour cream for your salad? We're oh, all no out of sour way. cream. Oh. <laughs> But yeah, it's just like that. Like, yeah, with the life analogies and all that stuff. Yeah, the crabs in the bucket. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's the crabs in the bucket. They bun button their nipple shirts and they're twirling them bitches trying to pull you back down, pretending like they care. Like, yeah. So it's hard to find people that really do care. I'm still trying to find my, my side that cares. Every now and again, I flicker in and out to the point that I care, I overcare. I care about you. But I know you don't care about me. But yeah, it goes like that. I'm still in the learning process. This is why I'm experimenting with my work to get me back into that mindset where I was when I was blissful, blissful, blissfully, blissfully ignorant. ignorant. We didn't even dive deep into the actual darkness of it either. We just like tip lightly touched the surface, like fucking mm -hmm, just the tip. We're on the surface of it. That's because we just talked just about it. Just the tip. Just the tip. Bro, <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that's enough. So, yeah. Uh, stay crabby, my friends. Stay. No, don't stay crabby. Fuck you. <laughs> that's it. you. We want the opposite for them. We want them to remain out of the crab bucket and not be crabs. Oh, want them to be I said it instead. wrong. Oh, that means they're going to get the misunderstanding of it. They'll never know.